the zine is once again set at Dragonstone Security, where Aeon Dunzern is having a small discussion. Um, the current scene is actually a comfortable looking room with uh, comfortable couches and some other items that appear to be collectible artifacts. Art. Mr. Dunzer? Evening, lads. <sighs> In Mr. Dunster. Gabriel is wearing a business suit and he has sunglasses on. Would you like to step inside with us? Yeah, yeah. It's been a long, it's been a long night. It's been a long couple of nights. You'll have to excuse my languid demeanour this evening. I am not as charming nor as fantastically madcap as normally I would be. I have provided some refreshments that will hopefully help you uh, relax. Oh, I'd like that very much, sir. Once they're inside, Gabriel will uh, open a bottle of blood meat. He'll uh, leave it a moment uh, so that uh, you can see that the seal has not been broken on it. And um, then proceed to, uh, to pour out three glasses. Actually, a mug. For my... a mu uh, three mugs, we'll say. I'll take a glass, mate. Very well, Mr. Dunsern. <laughs> ah, that'll do. So, I don't know how carefully you boys watch the news. You should watch it very carefully. If you do, you may have noticed that I have featured reasonably prominently recently with a wonderful face for television. But, not so much for my own fantabulous good looks, but more for my recent doings and the reason why I'm so damn tired right now. I have been expanding our business into the kind unions for particularly the public sector works. This is an area in which I have great expertise. I've actually been asking around various individuals about other unions. I see your eyes lighting up over there, Mr. Schmidt at the mention of the word unions, and of course, that would be why I'm here. I understand you yourself are involved in this area. I am indeed. I have a certain degree of influence over many unions, but I have a great deal of control over the construction workers. Not the construction sites, to be technical, uh, necessarily. That's a bit of a grey area, and not city planning, but when it comes to the actual workers themselves, I've... Got. I'm not the only one who is influenced there, but I'd I'd be surprised if anyone had more. Well, of course, it's the the gentlemen, the the men themselves that we are most interested in. First of all, I would I would say to you that our interest in this area is purely magnanimous. <laughs> we are looking to strengthen this city and part of our, our plan for this is to make sure that the, the kind workers, the kind people have as many comforts, as many reasons to be cheerful as possible and we believe that the people who provide these reasons to be cheerful will benefit from, from bringing the good cheer to these wonderful people I actually spoke to you before when I was here about opportunities, and this is another such opportunity. And it all ties in to what I spoke about before. We are now looking at having a reasonable amount of influence over police officers, fire services, ambulances, medical professionals oil industry, various different professional and small businesses also that have decided to sign up, we're amalgamating it into a sort of congress. Back home we had this thing called the TUC, you may have heard of it. It's the Trade Union Congress. I've been a bit more snappy because 
I'm a snappy sort of guy. I've, I've called this the Synergy Union Congress because it's all about working together and it's all about joint negotiation. I'm not here to ask you, Mr. Schmidt, to give up your influence or certainly to give it to me. What I am offering you, and it's an offer, it's not a request, is that your unions could benefit from joint negotiation with mine, with their employers. I mean, imagine if there's an issue with the construction and also the police, who would normally be possibly used to, to, to break such strike actions, such other things the construction workers may wish to do to voice their displeasure, the police come out in support of that action. The fire services come out in support of that action. Workers inside of City Hall come out in support of that action. It lends a lot of weight to anything you would want to achieve diplomatically. And this is what I'm all about. However, if one of the, one or more of the individuals involved uh, start having their unions striking, and uh, there was a all of the others went to support them, are you not concerned that one or two kindred might make things turn into constant strikes, and we never get anything done? I'm sure you've thought about this particular. <sighs> issue. Well, there's un hard. Unfortunately, there's some kindred in our city who don't think long and hard about these things. But the bottom line is when you have so much weight, you can throw very strong punches. <laughs> it may be impolitic for such kindred to attempt to rabble rouse, let's just say, to answer your question, do I think certain kindred may attempt to, to wangle things out of this? Yes, oh, I've thought of that. Am I concerned? Not really, because the unions is my area of expertise, but my family's main area of expertise is certainly not political, is certainly not keeping low-level workers happy. It's more with keeping other people out of our trouble. And these individuals who you speak of, I can assure you that they are, the people who speak for them are, are very happy with the arrangements they've made with their family so far. And if they were to perhaps be informed that such arrangements could come to an end or could in fact be sent to another bidder may find that they would want them to also support any action I would be wishing to take in this matter. And this is why it pays to have friends. I'm not opposed to this, however I might have additional terms. We'll sell out the nitty-gritty fine details. Um, but I'm not sure how much you know about the bus stations and the buses. Now... Public transport? Ah, yes. The bus stations are firmly under my domain. And I will make the point that, as was described by a previous primogen of the gangrel, the construction workers are my domain. Not just influence, domain. So I have to be careful about who I can let um, interfere with that domain. Obviously, I can't keep track of every single construction worker. I assume one or two people will be fed off them. That's, that's where I'm going to go. But the bus stations are also my domain. I'm in an awkward position where another kindred controls the majority of the actual buses. However, it is a fortuitous time, and with a little bit of assistance, I might be more on the political kindred side of things, I might be able to add the buses wholesale to my domain. I have some of them on the kind side. Um, the individual who controls the buses, the majority of them, as domain, is August, uh, sorry, is Nathaniel Richards. <laughs> that illustrious elder. He... You can see why I'm... Previously, when we 
uh, previously I was occupied with other things. I'm not foolish enough to try and clamor for everything I can get if the moments aren't right. But right now, although my duties as a hound are keeping me quite busy, I'm in a position where I think I can make gains there. And if I can add the bus services and indeed the bus drivers union to my domains officially by the time uh, Mr. Richards has met his well-deserved untimely end, then I'm sure we could make sure they also aid here. Now I'm hoping to progress quietly, so to speak, in some ways. I'm not... I don't... Whatever else I think about Richards, he is an elder. I'm not foolish enough to run in and just try and take over the thing wholesale. But I'm... I would have the additional price tag that if you... When when Richards is gone, you will lend whatever support you can towards myself being a professionally recognized domain holder. It would be a lot cleaner and neater for everyone involved if the individual who went to bus stations, a loyal individual to the Cameron in the city, rather than it being handed over to somebody else. Also, I don't know about you, but I'm a little concerned with regards to... If those bus buses fell into the hands of Ventru, for example, they have the airports. I don't think I can fathom what the Tremere were thinking, handing them over. They must have gotten quite a nice bounty. And the docks. And I believe they have quite a deal of influence with truckers. Not to I, mention the rail lines already. Not to mention the rail lines. You can see why I would be particularly concerned if the bosses fell into their hands. They wouldn't unload, I don't think they'd be foolish enough to unload anything into bus stations, but there's plenty of other stops. So that would be, if particularly it fell into their hands as opposed to my own, ooh, it could be quite difficult to get things moved in and out of the city. Having, not, would... having not been briefed on the, the bus services when I was going through the City Hall papers. I'm assuming this is a private bus company? The bus companies, there are several of them. I have some degree of control on the kind side, but generally Richards has been given... He was recognised with the domain some time ago. I'm not sure when. It might have been before I even came to the city. It's been a few decades, but... After a while, obviously working at the bus stations, I found out that he was on the other side. While he was playing nice and um, towing certain lines, I certainly wasn't going to tangle with an elder over that territory, not unless he really messed up. However, now he's not in good standing, and he certainly has been ble messing up. Blowing up oil rigs and that sort of thing is not the kind of thing that helps one's political status. No... Well, Mr. Richards, I believe, is subject of a death warrant of sorts from various parties. I don't think he'll be long for the night, but I would have to... I would have to imagine, even as he lives... Is he he's the owner of these several companies? I believe on the kind side he owns several. I'm not sure. Uh, he's probably using proxies for a few of them. Um, it can be hard to discover these things, especially when they've been so ingrained. But since uh, Mr. Schmidt has uh, retained my services as counselor on the matter, uh, while I've advised him to refinance some of those companies, a simple thing that pretty much anyone can do if they're so inclined. After all, you're just looking for a little bit of profit for owning something. No need to get all excited about such things. Uh, but I'm thinking that since... Mr. Dunsir, you're in the unions, and uh, 
Mr. Schmidt would probably quite naturally have some expansion of his influence towards, say, if there were to be a, say, truckers and bus drivers union. So like a merger then. And uh, that would mean that if Ventru decide to, oh, say, put a squeeze on the Giovanni, on the import-export side, they just might find out that the trucks, for some reason, while fully fueled and ready to go, ain't moving anywhere. And they still need them to move anything. This could be an idea. Because I have been hearing of trouble in terms of getting certain items in and out at the moment. And it seems that there's no end to the venture expansion despite their recent trouble. Which mm -hmm. is fine. They always do. But when they start interfering with the family's main business lines, with my capo's main businesses. We don't stand for that. So we only strike back as hard as we are struck. So far, they haven't openly done anything. Certainly, the individuals who have been causing problems, we couldn't directly say that this is a, a move by a venture kindred, but it would seem plausible at this point. So any moves we could take in that direction would certainly be welcome from my end. As far as the buses go, I think there's a way in where obviously you have the stations, the companies are privately owned, probably not by Mr. Richards himself. There could be a way in there if we could get to the individuals involved without cutting the head off. Seems like the head's cut itself off already to some extent. Mm -hmm. He would obviously know we've moved, but it could be, and I just have a thought, that he has this officially recognised domain. I'm assuming this domain is recognised by some kind of authority. It is, I believe, by the Prince, though I'm not 100% certain on that. However, for the moment, just moving in on the kind side of things, uh, until he is once more deceased, I wouldn't want to be seen to be trampling on, on somebody else's domain, so we will pro uh, progress to our propriety. I wouldn't want to be having anybody suggesting that the Giovanni or the Gangrel do not re respect the tradition of domain, but if we have ourselves all our ducks in a row, so to speak, on the kind side, it makes it that much easier on the kindred side. Well, let me ask you, does a, does a vampire with a blood hunt on his head have domain from the prince? See, things get awkward because it is not unknown for kindred who are under a blood hunt to have it rescinded. It has happened before. And it may happen again. That's why I'm not foolish enough to be going in stamping your place. Plus, while he's still alive, or well, while he's still walking around these nights, I'm not painting a target on the back of my head. Not not in bright neon colours anyway, I know by doing any kind of moves I'm he's not if he's already done what he's done, which we all know he has, he won't be afraid of taking out one hound. So I want to limit the amount of exposure for the moment. I intend living to a ripe old age. <laughs> As do we all. But if we want to move on this, then waiting would be costly. I'm thinking that the refinancing on the kind side in the on the side. That's just business. It's not like he can go, you can't do that. Give somebody a loan. Please. I'm actually interested to know. Has he unionized his bus drivers? And that's where it gets interesting because the docks are currently held by two sets of domains. The Ventrue might have large portions of the corporate interest there. 
but the Bruja control the dirt work is. Now, if the dock workers union joins you, as they, as well as might, if uh, Mr. Schmidt here ends up running the truckers and bus drivers union, those are unions, those are not the uh, corporate assets that can be declared, have been declared as someone's domain. My thoughts exactly. Our lovely friends in the vent room might be more reasonable with their prices after one or two actions, if it came to that. And this is why the unions are so important, because while a Ventru may own a company, they cannot own an individual. Well, not, not legally. All the time. Not in all the time. Circles. <laughs> <laughs> but they can be made to see the power of the fist of the kind when it's turned against them appropriately. And many of these people, especially in these sort of jobs, are looking for leadership. They're looking for someone to, to back them, someone with clout, with resources. I seem to have positioned myself as somewhat of a public figure on this issue. And I'm getting more and more phone calls. The damn thing doesn't stop ringing. <laughs> Left it with my driver, actually. God help us if he answers it. Oh, God. Anyway. But moving on. The, the union side of it has been neglected. The kind have been neglected. I've been, I've been travelling around this city since I got here. I'm not long for this city, believe it or not. I've been working hard since I got here on this issue. Because no one sees the power of the people here. They see the power of an elder vampire, they see the power of money, the power of owning things, and that's power to a point. But the factory doesn't run without workers, the buses don't move without drivers, the trucks don't go anywhere without drivers, the docks are empty with no one to unload the boats, as you've pointed out. And if these people have not been unionised, and I've not looked fully into that yet, perhaps we can come to an understanding where with my, both my diplomatic and public clout at the moment, and your contacts and our joint resources, both behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, we can, we can find a way to make a, an excellent little bit of business whereby we might not be making a great deal of money, a great deal of anything really from this, but we have a weapon which has been underestimated very sorely by the kindred in power in this region. Indeed, the unions uh, have a bad rap for some odd reason in the United States. Mm. Capitalism, my friend. Mr. Duncern, I don't know if it's the blood meter that top of conversation, but your mood seems to be brightening somewhat. It's just the fantastic company. What can I tell you? <laughs> I've hardly touched a drop. And I really should touch a lot more of it. But I'm trying to keep a clear head as much as possible. But, mm. yes, we, we, we have to... Information, I suppose, has to be gathered. If we are going to bring these unions together, and I've now got enough of them, that whether or not you guys want to work with me, that's fine, it's up to you. You are your own men, so to speak. And I'll quite happily leave. I will quite happily let you guys have your domain, I have mine, that's fine. There's no problem whatsoever. But we can accomplish a lot more together than we could apart, and this is the point. This is why I called it synergy. And it's not just synergy between the workers and their bosses, or each worker with each other, or each union with each other. It's about synergy between kindred and kind in a way that so many people can't at the moment conceive of. 
And of course, as soon as they now realise this, this is becoming public, I, I do expect many kindred to go, oh, look what the Giovanni are doing. Let's make a sudden rush to unionise everything. And that will only be better for us because they have to negotiate through the largest body in the city. And we, right now, can create that here. And if we do that, then we have the, per the percentage of the power that no one else can touch. And they have to do business with us because it's all right for the dock workers to go on strike. But I then say that maybe my police services will be inclined to help break that action. And there you go. The chief of police... I'm sure people will be dying to ghoul that man, whoever he will be, but the chief of police doesn't man every checkpoint. The chief of police doesn't arrest every street thug. The chief of police reads figures, statistics, which are written down by people in my union. You see where this all comes together. The real power isn't with the man in his big chair in his boardroom, in his wonderful oak-panelled office at City Hall, because the people who put him there are the kind. And that, my friends, is what I'm bringing to you today. And that's why I believe, and I've come to you first with this, I'm sure there are other people who have some interest in this matter. I've come to you first because I spoke to you just the other day and found you to be very reasonable and very interested in the right kind of work for this city, the right kind of the right kind of business. Not this let's blow up each other's skyscrapers, let's destroy oil rigs, let's knock down factories, none of this rubbish. You guys seem to be interested in making sure that everything works and that everything remains strong. And that, as a clan, together, we can all profit from this. And the family understands that better than anyone, as you know. Because we are a family, after all. Hmm. That would be a very good... very good thing. Only a few things on there that it's all better to address now than come up later. Of course. Are there other people you might be approaching? At the moment, don't have any names on my list, being honest. But I am looking. I looked and I found you, first off. But there may be more. And if there are, I would look to bring them in, possibly. If not, as I said... I've achieved, effectively, what I want to achieve in this area. My union will be... I say my union, it's not really my union. I'm simply the spokesperson for the Congress. Yeah, but... The organisation for which you are a spokesperson for. Exactly, yes. The people you seek to represent to the best of your ability and to the best of their benefit. I think it would make a good speech at some point. <laughs> um, you should have heard the speech I delivered the other day. I've been writing it for I months. believe I had a transcript of it read to me. Oh. It was a very good speech, no if, doubt about it. If only you could cry, my friend. I'm sure you would have. <laughs> oh. Tell me, Mr. Fell, you represent a large business interest in this city. Mm, this is true. A great part of your overheads must be wages, employment issues, that sort of thing. Oh, I dare say that my employment costs are more than they should be for the size of organisation. Once again... If this sort of enterprise expands, these people could be made more amenable to such terms, especially if they're incentivized in other ways. Oh, Mr. Dunson, you mistake me. If you're inclined to assist me in making the small uh, workers uh, 
representation that I've established within the structural organization of Maltis Corporation into a larger union. I'd of course consider it um, even exchange for me to direct that union to support the larger collective and reap all the benefits such a strong collective brings to the workers. And here's the fun thing about what I've been doing and I'm thinking on that side. I don't want to cut their pay. I want to bring up the cost of employment for guards across the whole sector policy. I have certain standards. I want everyone to live up to those standards if they're in the security business. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very clever man. You're a very clever man. Why I could, I, I could why definitely I... help you there. People mm. always want more. It's much more difficult to convince them to get less. I can do that. I'm a very convincing individual. But to, to tell them that they can have more, even better. And as you say, it would make, it would make your competitors more difficult to deal with when employing the best because obviously the man who offers the best terms gets the best staff. Yes, but uh, they should also at least pay a living wage to every worker. Maybe see that the gods who put their bodies on the line for the security and benefit for all those corporations. In the current climate, this could be established. Small health benefits included in their employment contract. When we consider everything that's going on, with everything exploding around us, I think that the the general public could be amenable to such a such a bill if you want. We we have some influence at City Hall. I don't know if this is a city issue or if it was a could be a state issue, but we could certainly lobby on this matter or have it lobbied. Start with the city and just uh, I think when the collective shows its strength. The individual unions show that they can raise the level of well-being for all their members. And I can see the money is of no object to yourself at the moment. Well, I'm not making quite as much a profit as uh, someone who'd be willing to step down on the little man might. But you but understand. It's not about the money now, is it? Yes, because you understand that. Profit is more than coins and notes. I do not need to need to get more coin. The gratitude of those I employ is much more a reward than anything else. Then we are definitely of one mind in this matter, which is heartening. If only my heart yet beat properly. I would be moved to tears by this speech, certainly. <laughs> so, I think that if you are kind enough to lend me your assistance in establishing the Guards Union, as, um, uh, as based on the well-off guards that work for Dragonstone Security, I can see that there is a spokesperson for that union. I can trust. I could probably very well see that uh, such a union would recognize the benefits your collective brings in. And if Mr. Schmidt is amenable to your suggestion and you're willing to assist him on the Pruggers and Bus Drivers Union, then perhaps you'll get not one just the construction workers, but construction workers, the truckers, the bus drivers, and the guards added to your collective. Well, we'll look into the Docklands as well. Sounds like a, a very tasty cake we've baked today. <laughs> and that would be Lysander Eudokia. 
who I gather has been feeling the ventral push. Do you understand him to be a reasonable man? A very reasonable and amenable to most things that help the downtrodden to better their lives. Well, I may then have to take my life into my hands and go beseech the Bruja for their assistance. Well, you are discussing the Bruja Brunigan. If you wish, I could host the meeting here. Or it it might be a good idea to bring us all together in one place, especially since we've had such a productive meeting today. Indeed. As a... As well, I've got an excuse on the mortal side of things as a consultant for Dragonstone Security. I will, of course, make sure that everything goes off smoothly. Just make sure that if you are appointing a, a union head, because, of course, I'm not asking to be put in charge of your union. Oh, I'm not going to be appointing nobody. No, no, no. Not. My workers will elect from their numbers someone they feel is trustworthy and outstanding. Now make sure it's someone that you can trust also, sir. Yes, because after all I have shown it's in my best interest to help them to make well, so that everyone makes well. You strike me as a man who has some experience of leading an army. Why, I have no idea where you'd come up with such an idea. <laughs> oh, from my dark and twisted mind, sir. <laughs> Well, so Mr. Schmidt, how are you thinking about this issue? If I get your backing on the political side and in any other ways you think reasonable with regards to getting myself officially recognized as the domain holder for the bosses, which would, as we have already discussed, uh, block the Ventru from trying to solidify the last of a uh, uh, monopoly, which they're already starting to uh, get uppity with, so to speak, by the sounds of it. That would benefit us both. And after that, well, I would be more than happy in return to sign on to this cooperative effort for the, uh, for the construction workers' unions. With regard to the bus service, uh, the bus drivers and the truckers, well, if we both move in that regard and you we help unionize them, well, I'm not opposed to that, and I'd be quite happy to see them well taken care of in a way that benefits us all. Let me sell this to you, then. The Anarch Nathaniel Richards, the outlaw, the born again <laughs> Nathaniel Richards, <laughs> it would seem, is, is, the, is just that, is an outlaw, is a dead man. He can surely have no domain. He can surely be no longer welcome within the structures and the businesses of this city. And I'm only saying this as an independent out with the structure of the Camarilla. This is merely an opinion from a concerned kindred who is looking on this from the outside. This situation cannot be allowed to continue, but, my prince, <laughs> you wouldn't want to alienate the gangrel particularly not when they form such strong parts of your establishment. It would be surely to your benefit to, to keep that domain within Clan Gangrel, would it not? In fact, I do believe Can Clan Gangrel holds the domain for the bus stations, surely the bus drivers. It's just a logical extension of that. Who? Well... Let's bear in mind who I'm speaking to. <laughs> but who could not see the reason in that? And who, not even Prince Wolf himself, would be loath to, to strike out against Mr Richards, I believe. But we shall see what, what the future holds in store for that gentleman. I do believe getting him stripped of the domain will be a matter of simple harping in the Elysiums, and that voices could be easily brought to bear to support such a notion, and that voices could be made to see the reason 
in what we here today are proposing and would in fact make such a proposal for us. Do you believe you could make those voices heard? Of no. course, the, the Giovanni and Elysium are not bedfellows, but I've, I've met enough and contacted enough kindred so far to, to assure you that many are amenable to, to working with us and to seeing our side of things, especially because, let's face it, we, the Giovanni, have been practically the champions of the masquerade and new serum for the past while. Would you believe? I certainly can't believe it, but... Regrettably, yeah. one or two Gangrel <laughs> have been pulling down the clan average in that regard, Mr. Richards. Once he is dealt with, I'm, I'm sure we can assist you with holding that up. We have been um, trying, but he's a cunning elder. If, if, you, if your clan are maintaining their strong ties with the leadership of the city, I believe they would be, be very happy to reward you, particularly if you are continuing to support the effort to apprehend Mr. Richards and to finally see an end to him. I believe other elders are on the hunt. We may or may not have been contacted with a view to locating this individual already. Well, whoever brings down Nathaniel Richards is certainly welcome to it. Of course, it would be a very good thing for us if it were to be the sheriff and the hounds under him, showing that Glanging Rill are the law within the city. The rule of law, well, from the Policeman's Union to the Securities Union, the rule of law is paramount in New Serum. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we are of one mind in this matter. Yes. I, I believe that if Sheriff Ford is provided with those that information, let's say as a show of good faith perhaps, nothing serious, he will be not at all opposed to doing the level best he can with that information. We will certainly be passing on anything we get. We have been tapped, so to speak, and we always like to be helpful where we can, because it's good for business. And uh, in that matter, perhaps there's no need to even mention the collective as such. After all, what do we have to do with the sheriff's business at this time? Well, it would certainly seem to me that none of us three have anything to gain directly from this piece of business. After all, it's always uh, unfortunate when the law in the city has to go and invoke the right of destruction held by the prince or prince pro tempora. It's not something to be discussed in the same uh, table with mortal unions and such. Oh, no, we'll certainly be keeping that particular morsel off of their table, I would think. <laughs> but uh, on, the, on the other side of things, I understand that the Giovanni have a few contracts with the Anax. I'll not ask. I'll not pry into it any further. I'll just make out the, the point that if those anarchs were to, you know, hear a few mentions about how the way Nathaniel Richards has been doing business is pretty much bad for everyone in the city. And it's causing some little trouble just, you know, to do to be seen doing business with Anax when their leader is such an irrational man. I know I've already heard some individuals who used to describe themselves as anarchs have started describing themselves as independents and certainly don't speak kindly of Mr. Richards at all. Although I think he's got a unfortunate large number of them supporting him. Yes, but they have... For now. 
but perhaps there are some of those who support him can be made seen that it's not good business, it doesn't make good sense, it's against the common benefit of the Arabs. Any independent independence in the city, it certainly isn't good for the camera. No one benefits from such needless strife. No, definitely not. And the more strife we see, the more questions the kind are asking. Yes, and that's that's something that's been stretched for too long. I mean, when the Ventral apparently have to clean their own house. A dirty house is no good to anyone living within it. But... Yes. Indeed, it would be much nicer if the Anarchs could, you know, maintain a cordial opposition to the Camarilla instead of just going around destroying things needlessly. I can assure you from our point of view that our activities with the Anarchs will hopefully be keeping them busy and if their ire is to be directed anywhere it will be di directed in the appropriate direction rather than one that would be harmful to any of our interests. That would be a very good thing. I mean, after all, we all know that the gang rail, as long as certain lines are towed, have a tendency to be off the mind of live and let live. After all, if people start dying all over the place, there's always a risk that the next one to die is yourself, and nobody wants that. <laughs> War's nasty business. Well, we know that more than most. Lots of money to be made, but quite often not much more. Infrastructure destroyed, businesses in ruins. And uh, for the kindred, be they of whatever persuasion, it's usually the slow and steady approach that in the end brings the most profit. However you count that profit, as I've said, my profit isn't counted in the coin. But the other less tangible assets. And I'm thinking that you yourself might see my point where I say when I say that making a killing, so to speak, in business quickly, it's all good, but it's difficult to tap that source again. Instead, if you have a few centuries with steady income, it'll measure up to whatever you might have made it fast. As we've seen with the situation with the banks right now, mm. making a quick buck is all well and good, but if you're planning for the future, you can't make anything from something you've blown up. Yes. After all, there's always, always the question, congratulations, you made this much money. Now, what are you going to do with it since you decided to bring all of these things that bring that money to you away? Uh, it seems short-sighted to myself. And short-sighted kindred are not often long-lived. Indeed. However, I believe that there is a long game here for us. We can actually profit from this wanton destruction that's taken place, because after the destruction comes the construction, and there's that word again, Mr. Schmidt. Yes, there's a reason why I, many years ago, had it officially recognised. Um, I'm not sure if there are many other kindred who have domain over a sector of workers, but... Um, I believe there are areas, but the, let's be honest, I've worked with public sector bodies for many, many years. My home country is particularly left-wing in many places, and 
one of the largest contractors for any construction firm is the state. If the city are rebuilding, if the city are looking to do public works to rejuvenate and re-energise this city as as we hope they will, as the mayor is being advised would be in his best interests. My good friend, Mr. Rothstein, those contracts would be best for the benefit of the city and for the benefit of his election prospects, would be best kept within the workers of the city. And if those contracts so happen to fall into companies which are in your sphere, that would just simply be because they provided the most interesting and low cost and effective contract tender for that work, I'm sure. Not that the department that opens such documents would be controlled by another union looking to do business. Mr. Dunsern, I do not say this often, but I like the way you think. There's many people who could uh, give the similar speech, but I must say I admire your thoughts. These thoughts are much to be admired, I think, and have not been admired enough by enough people because they've missed the boat, my friends. Seeing something is fine, seeing it first is much better. I've come to you first because you're men of business and you're men of influence. We together can not make money. We can make money. As you've said, we will make money. Money's there to be made. We'll make money with or without each other, despite each other if it comes to it. But at the bottom at the bottom line, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, we will make power for ourselves, we'll make influence for ourselves. And that is worth more to creatures as long lived as us than something as temporary as a dollar bill. <sighs> a sigh of contentment, I hope. Indeed. No, it is just once more I have to say it is a pleasure doing business with a reasonable businessman such as yourself. That's why I do often, you know, work with Mr. Fell. Unfortunately, not all the kindred in the city are so level-headed and forward-thinking. You know, the Giovanni have a reputation, but that reputation is in some cases accurate. They, we, have our, we have our mafioso, we have our gangland elements, it's to be sure, there's money to be made there, there's power to be had there, but I myself have always specialised in diplomatic effort in getting people to work together, and in certain establishments that's easier than others, and I always seek out people of a like mind to do this kind of work with, and here I am. Mr. Dunsern, I have to ask, has anyone mentioned you uh, the possibility of unionizing yourself with a few like-minded individuals in this pursuit? Unionizing myself? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you'll understand me slightly better if I say that on this we appear to be of uh, like mind. And uh, and while we may have different business associates on other sides, we might have a few other deals. If we were to say that there is a union culture at work, it will give us the everyone, yourself and us both, a little support. It gives the respectability of, um, well, as you said, a collective working together with a clearly stated goal. Union sits back in his chair, looks up, takes the golf club he holds in his hand and looks at it for a long while.
the camera I would be satisfied with a gangrel coterie taking on a Giovanni. Oh, it wouldn't be a gangrel coterie taking on a Giovanni. Not at all. It would be a a collection of individuals free to do as they please, recognizing mutual benefit in cooperation and understanding between each other, and making it publicly known that they consider each other to be members of a select club, and that they will, if pressed upon, put that club ahead of a small business interests. As long because as you're they recognize to put the value up. in the business that's greater. Well, as long as you're certainly not asking me to put it ahead of my own family. I could oh, never do uh, that. Oh, uh, Mr. Dunsern, uh, there are several Tremere who joined coteries. And, uh, of course, it's understood that should the call from for the Tremere come down the line to do something, they may be forced to do so. They might... They will not have a personal say on the matter because a respect to their elders compels them to act in a certain manner. It might be provided that those working with the said person might receive a little a heads up, shall we say, that if we were to do things this way, I might not have to influence anything untowardly to my own best interests. And similarly, it would mean that if the gang realm, for instance, which we both happen to be, were to have some issues come down the line with the Giovanni, for whatever reason, not because anyone in this room, but because individuals are always individuals, and sometimes there's some fights and the family needs to be supported, be seen to be supported. Well, if uh, the Giovanni need to correct a gangrel for something, and uh, say the gangrel hear about it, and agree with it. Maybe that correction can be done so that there's no nothing more than a lesson learned for that individual, not to make business difficult for anyone. It's a common courtesy among the coterie members to just give the individuals a head up that, you know, it might be a good idea to See what the weather is like down south for a few weeks. Nothing serious, nothing direct, just a, you know, do you have business interest in Scotland, for instance, you should be seeing tomorrow? A friendly question, I think. I might just remind you the potential usefulness of um, not only being a cartery with the claw of Clan Gangrel, but... Um, Mr. Fell is also a member of the Praetorian Guard. He is a man who rubs shoulders with people of lofty positions such as your own. Is that so? No. I wasn't aware of that. Well, he looks at his golf not, club again. I do not make the habit of speaking of contracts. Yes, it is true. I have uh, currently active contract as member of Praetorian Guard for a certain price to see to it to the best of my ability and knowledge that Prince Wolf, should he request it, is afforded all the security I can provide. In that case, I think we have an accord. A I... unique for the specific reason of making certain that there is a common influence driving the 
collective that you have so wisely put together? I suppose a more formal approach to recognising this group might be beneficial to all involved and would certainly garner trust between the individuals. And it would also make it so that if uh, any one of us should be seen uh, breaking our word as far as this uh, coterie and its stated purpose goes, we might find business a bit more difficult on our other ventures. It's the price one pays for uh, keeping the appearances. I believe there's much to gain and not much to lose from this, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't see I don't see any problem here. And I have I have just consulted with one of our older generation just this very moment, and he's certainly amenable to it. You might not understand of what I speak. I'd like you to meet my father. <laughs> oh, my father was a an interesting man, an interesting man, who met his demise at the hands of a very hairy individual from the country. They seem to have a problem with the Dunson sometimes back home. I got his teeth torn out for that and handed to me by my grandfather. And this, as a gift, my grandfather, Archibald Dunson, Big Archie as we call him, is a, a speaker for the dead of some renown, particularly back home. Perhaps almost as much as my great uncle Ranald, who lives in this very city. And he had ensured that his son did not pass on so ignominiously and handed him to me as a great help and counsellor. And if we are going to work together, then there should be less secrets between us than I would have with others. If I were you, I would never put my hands on this. Not because I would care. I wouldn't care. It's just a bloody stick. But we, Archie, has been known to take exception to people putting their hands on him. <laughs> I like to keep him with me at all times if I feel threatened, if I feel I might be in trouble. And he likes to feed me information that he becomes aware of. He likes to feed me his thoughts. So, just so you are aware, this is a union not of three, but of four, in fact. And an older one than you might have thought before. Being a mere whippersnap as I am. But, yes, he's, he's content that there's not enough risk in this venture and that it will in fact bring untold gain to our other ventures as you've stated yourself and let's be honest you're both men of business you would send me out that door if you thought it would serve your purpose best we've got no past I'm not stupid gentlemen as you can see we will benefit from each other greatly I could walk out that door as much as you would send me out of it. We're all sitting here talking. I think working together, we can achieve much more than we could apart. I believe that in every, every issue, of course, being why I'm so involved in unions, together is better than apart for everyone. Kind and kindred also. Together, we can achieve more. Not just us three, but the millions who live here work here, and who want to come here just to visit. All of these people can be brought to understand the benefits of working together, and we can accomplish that as this coterie of which you speak. Perhaps it uh, indeed would be very well advised of us to make it public. Let the others know what has transpired when 
they start waking up to the fact that, hey, we have unions in the United States. We have these horrible, horrible socialistic things that work for the betterment of common man, the downtrodden such. And when they die and dip their hands in any of those unions, well. People controlling unions is fine, but they might want to find the benefits to their own union businesses of working within an organisation such as the one proposed here. As the mm -hmm. one I've created, as the one we will be expanding. And I would put it to them that without you, there is no union. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, quite happy with this agreement. We'll afford each other the... Shall we toast it, gentlemen? Yes. I would hazard to say that we... I think we've all come out of this meeting with more than we thought we would. A happy situation. I feel fresh as a daisy suddenly, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> to your good health, sirs, and welcome to the glob. Slange. I'm afraid we've been keeping you talking an awful lot, Mr. Dunsern, and not allowing you to uh, avail the libations as much, so Gabriel will reach to the side of his chair and he'll take out a, just a small nondescript bag um, just for the journey home and inside you will find a, another bottle of the uh, Viking blood meat. The handy thing of this particular beverage is, although not commonly drunk, it is drunk by kind. It's not masquerade breaching, although if you're if a kindred ended up drinking it for uh, morning breakfast and uh, you know for breakfast, lunch, and uh, every meal, people will definitely start to take notice. But something you can drink once on your in a while. <laughs> that will be most useful to me. I do not find mortal foodstuffs to be palatable to me. Mm. I did once contrive of a way I could use this. <laughs> might be revealed at some point when I have someone to deal with. Let's just say, when you've only been able to drink and spit for as long as I have, you might want to keep all that spit in one place. A man could drown in that. Drown in my spit. <laughs> How fitting for traitors to the family to drown in my spit. <laughs> oh... We have an accord, or we have uh, indeed come ahead in this meeting far more than I think anyone would have dared thought beforehand. But it's worked out for the best, I believe. Indeed. And I believe we shall find that uh, we will get challenged on it. After all, people are loath to accept that someone has found some pie they were not aware of, and they will demand a slice of that pie, because it is an outrage that someone like you fill the end, because it could be used to describe any one of us. Those dirty, those dirty, unwashed, Barbarians from the woods, or those dirty, and whatever you have ever heard, fill in the planks. <laughs> I find it that those protestations usually happen most of them when my business is good. Not speaking for other Giovanni, but I can assure you that I myself have never bedded down with someone in my own family, as you may have heard. Yeah. Well, I do not care one way or another, Mr. Dunsir. I have a long history with very interesting individuals. I have uh, several very interesting individuals with whom I worked in the times when I was breathing. I knew nothing of these kindred things. 
I was just hating the heat and hoping that the sun would go away for a few moments. <laughs> so I could take a nap before I had to go and kill someone else. Um, but in the end, I found that when it comes to those despicable, horrid things that people say, anyone of us, any kindred, any vampire, let's use the vulgar to its heightened term, any vampire does. It's been done by a mortal long before that vampire was born. It's not something we invented, and nothing new under the moon. Surely to say that the, the vampires created violence and debauchery would be to sell short the genius of the kind. <laughs> and even those kind I have had to deal that I'd say would probably cause most Malkavians to balk at the thought of embracing these insane wretches. They could be worked with. They had something they wanted, and they were out frank with me about what it was, how they preferred to go about it, and they were willing to listen my advice on how it was better achieved. And, of course, there were a few who didn't listen to me. They're not among the living anymore. <laughs> Well, I was about to say that people may voice their displeasure, but some of those will become partners, people we can work with, the smart ones. Others might just find out what very old spit tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking forward to working with you, Mr. Dunstern. I am looking forward forward to putting these devious minds of ours into a united effort to make certain everybody understands that there are there is a union deciding what the unions do. And I'm very much looking forward to the fruits of our labours being realised. <laughs> I don't think we yet realised, we certainly didn't yet realise when we arrived to this meeting, I thought I was here to discuss one union, and instead we have practically created a new super union. <laughs> if you'll pardon the mixture of words, the super heroism, but... A few details have to be put in order, but... Oh, indeed. indeed. Small but, things. A couple of months and everything will be going swimmingly. But I think we, yet may, not, we may not yet have realised how much can be achieved with this venture and just how influential this will become. And anyone who wants to get on board with that can share in that, and anyone who doesn't will simply regret that decision at a later date when they realise what they could have wielded. And after all, we can always have people who work with, ally with the synergy part and keep to themselves as far as anything else goes? Well, of course, the unions are separate as themselves. I didn't want to, again, if we're going to be allies in this matter, I, I didn't want the owners of these corporations to be staring down the barrel of my gun. I wanted them to see that it was Simply a, a coalescence was all I was proposing. These unions have existed, with the exception of the police, who have only recently formed one, not a, under my supervision, of course, <laughs> but individuals that have been concerned. In the current climate, it was also simple to convince them that they had to do something to protect themselves from the exploitation, particularly in a dangerous line of work such as the police, such as security. In these times when there's so much violence, their interests need to be represented. And what better way than to, to bring it all under one banner and to say, 
If you cross the police, you cross fire, you cross ambulances, you cross doctors, you cross private security also because they are not going to step in to now fill the breach left by the police. Because of course they are sympathetic to the plight and they understand that the police have a role, particularly with the citizenry, that this and is their when, service. And when you have one of the owners of one of the most reputable secu private security companies going, it is not the place of private security to provide the basic civilian security service. It's the place of private security to enhance it for those who feel the need for it. And certainly it would be interesting for these opponents of ours to note that even when they lean on us from their tower buildings that it won't just be us three who lean back against them. The city itself will lean back. Indeed. Indeed. I think we might wish to celebrate this uh, very nice union tonight. Say a night out on the town. Uh, good friends that we are, we I think we really should visit as many bars as we possibly can. Spread their little wealth around, buy a few rounds and let people know why we are so very happy of all these wonderful things that are happening. And now it is I who am impressed with this thinking. Because rule one of diplomacy is to press the flesh. <laughs> I would bring a point of order, although I'm very interested. Um, technically, um, I am a member of a pre-existing coterie. I'm not sure, I haven't really been involved in any other one. I'm not sure about people being involved in more than one coterie. We only gather formally very, very rarely. So I'm... I will raise that now. I'm not sure of the uh, the etiquette before I uh, get myself in trouble with yourself and the other individuals. Well, thank you for being honest with us. That's the first thing. Secondly, I would ask you, are their noses as pretty as mine? <laughs> A hard question. Some are, but regrettably not all. Well, then I'm going to simply have to cut them off. It's the only way. <laughs> I shall have a Stanley knife brought forth directly. I cannot withstand such a slut upon my character, upon my, my perfect face. Um, I can... Allow me to point out something for you, gentlemen. We are a coterie about unions. We have a specifically defined purpose for our cooperation. Whatever other business we may have, whatever other alliances we may have, those are alliances and businesses we have on the side. They are things that are, for instance, let us make, let me make this uh, the, the point this way. If I were to be uh, part of the police union has uh, some capacity and uh, and uh, as such I were to also be say a member of a lodge now in a police union I'm looking out for the interest of the police of course that's said that's why I joined nobody questions that front in a lodge I'm more interested about the the business dealings, the social gathering in the lodge itself. There is no need to go around saying that because I'm a member of a lodge I should step down from my union position now, is there? I think I understand you, Mr. Fell. A coterie, coterie is just a word. It's a word saying a group of people with common interest. And people have many interests, let's be honest. I certainly would have no problem personally with you being part of this other coterie as long as it didn't compromise our business here. And perhaps if it would make them 
happier we wouldn't call this a coterie, let's call it an interest group, let's call it whatever you like. I don't think that will necessarily be a problem. I just wanted to make sure my cards were on the table, so to speak. I wouldn't want you to become aware of this later and if it was to cause problems. If you're aware of it now and unusual circumstances come up, I have made you aware. Uh, and, of course, I'll expand upon my metaphor slightly. If I, upon the meeting of a lodge, hear something that might jeopardize some interest of the police union I'm part of, or vice versa, I might give myself a thought and go, now, this is bad for us on this side for a certain amount of time. Maybe I should bring it up some people I trust without whom I have common interest with. Let's talk it through. Let's see if it's, there's some compromise or even if the friends with who I share a common interest are willing. Perhaps the lodge members are willing to take a small hit in their profits to make certain that I don't have to harm my other interest. Perhaps the police union is willing to negotiate with the lodge about taking a small pay cut to keep things amenable to everyone. This would actually help us. I agree. The more, we, the more we, influence we bring to the table, the better. Yes, it would mean that we actually have a we have a way of hearing of possible conflicts of interest and we can discuss them. We can find a solution instead of people needing to bash heads for it. We can head off the trouble before it comes to a head. There's, we, quite, enough, there's quite enough hard men roaming about the streets picking fights these days. I think if we can keep that to a, min a minimum, the better. Indeed. Foolish. I, 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 I always find such people difficult to understand. I understand the... I always find the threat of violence is far more useful. As long as if you if push comes to shove, you're willing to back it up. There's no reason to go straight to smashing things. Of course not. We've been in the violent business for long enough to know that it is simply a form of authority. It's not the only authority. Yes, and... Uh, well, look at this. This gathering here, look what we've achieved just through talking. No one's been punched, kicked, stabbed, or anything else you'd care to name. <laughs> and look what we've achieved just by talking. Interesting. Interesting for other people to note. Indeed. I wonder whatever they will do if we ever have to occasion to have to be forced into action. <laughs> they would find themselves having to cut through thicker armor than they might expect, and they would be they would be very tired by the time they got to we three. I'm just think of the new concept of uh, the fact that fools might begin to second guess themselves even more in regards to if they did try it and take us because. Well, to Gangrel, or the clan is renowned for its physical prowess. It's one of the clans in that regard. And the pain does not end if they're coming after us as a group because, well, the Giovanni are renowned in other circles for their abilities. Not physical necessarily, so although they certainly um, know how to pack quite a punch that belies their uh, physical frame. <laughs> but... Um, that's not why the uh, Giovanni are respected. Oh, not at all. It's because we're such charming individuals. Of course. <laughs> we'll beat yes. them up and tie them to a chair, and uh, then we'll let you have at them. Oh, with your sharp be... tongue. There we go. <laughs> oh, the things I can do with that tongue. However, the, the threat becomes more than the threat of final death where we're involved. Final death simply becomes your first death. Final death. Or your second. <laughs> let's let's just say that 
if uh, the three of us decide that someone has really deserved our undivided attention in the unfortunate matters that some individuals may, they might find that uh, under the will not be the end of their troubles. Of course. We each have different allies to call upon also. Indeed. Uh, I will make it known that uh, since we are revealing these little secrets, I will also make it known that there is another collaborative I'm a member of. That collaborative has a very simple reason of existence. They are of like mind of me with one particular thing. We all think that on the long run, little bit of peace and quiet in this city, especially after recent troubles, would be a very good thing for business. And you've certainly met the right man, because this is exactly what I'm pushing for. Indeed. So I trust there is no objection for me, perhaps, sharing the news with the um, quiet collaborative I have, and letting them know that. Well, you were talking about a pot crawl yesterday, uh, sorry, earlier, so uh, <laughs> I doubt it. Well, that were this union of us three is looking forward to helping that specific goal. And it could be a way of bringing others into the fold if they have interests conjoined with ours. I like it. Well, they just might afford myself with full knowledge that I might share it with this union. A little heads up if there's trouble heading our way. Pre-warned? Pre-armed. It's a collaborative effort to make certain that information about things that would disrupt the working of this fine city get told to the people who need to know about it. Yes, knowledge is very important in a city like this. I believe we're agreed then. Excellent, gentlemen. I think we all should take a few moments to collect ourselves. Uh, Mr. Dunzer, you might actually need to take a few moments. You seem worn out, to be honest. When you've been busy as I have, it doesn't matter if you're breathing or not. Sometimes you just want to sit there and watch the stars. Of course, I'm lying. I don't really want to do that at all. <laughs> I just want to go out, meet some charming and beautiful individual and dance the night away with that person. That's what I'm all about. Honest. <laughs> oh, uh, no need for masquerade here, Mr. Dunzer. <laughs> oh, it's not a masquerade. It's a way of life. Well... Oh. That's understandable. We all have our own preferences, how we conduct ourselves. And on that count, I prefer to take a small break before I head to town to party, enjoy myself, and spread the good news to the wider polite society that surrounds us. I believe I'd better collect my driver. He's probably down, or God knows what he's doing down there. He's been down there a while now. Which actually reminds me, Mr. Dunzern. I'm terribly sorry, Gabriel, I have to bring it up. How's your security currently, Mr. Dunzern? I seem to be in a position where it's in my best interest to make certain <laughs> it is unchallengeable. My security? Yes. In my haven, you mean? No, 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 no. When you're about in the city. Who would harm me? No, I'm certain that someone will come up with the foolish notion at some point. Uh, the Giovanni 
are a family. And that family has an awful lot of friends. And not all of them can be seen. Let's just say it would be in people's best interests to always remember that I'm never alone. In that case, should you be traveling between Elysiums and such with no, uh, well, with a need to bother your tribe or such? I'll make uh, one of the Dragonstone security armored limousines available for you. No charge, no costs, no nothing about it. They're there to make certain you get where you're going. And if anybody is foolish enough to try and intercept you, well, they at least have to be packing a bit more heavy weaponry than some 9 millimeters. It's a way of saying, I value this individual, and I might take a bleak view on anyone who seeks harm upon them. That would certainly make a statement. Indeed it would. But for tonight, I'd better not keep my man waiting. <laughs> Indeed. Well, um, gentlemen, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your business. And in time, I'm sure I'll thank you for all the cooperation that we will enjoy in the times to come. Well, gentlemen, uh, let us end with a handshake. Mr. Dunson, it will be a pleasure working and being allied with you. My friend, Mr. the Dunson. pleasure is, as always, mine. Mr. Schmidt. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, this is a rare occasion. <laughs> All right, let's get oiled up and start fucking then, shall we? Oops, right. No, <laughs> it's definitely time for me to go when I'm starting to get the baby oil out. Right, here we go. I shall leave you in the grace and favour of the Lord and a pleasant evening to you both. I shall catch you when I am refreshed and reinvigorated by the pleasant company of someone with a very tempting neck. I bid you farewell, and Ewan makes his way from the building. Well, that turned out extremely well, I think. It's uh, wondrous while reading one transcript of a speech and spending a few hours thinking about the ramifications what you to prepare for. Wouldn't you say? I agree. <sighs> Anything? I think uh, Schmidt and uh, Marcosius will share a few more drinks, discuss things, but nothing of similar impact. <laughs>